Amen. I just, uh, there's times that I just have to have it. Amen. I know I should want it all the time. I should have it all the time. But, you know, we get so caught up sometimes in things that are going on around us. And, and uh, we just need to pause. Feel after the Holy Ghost. Allow God to do what He needs to inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've got your Bibles, I'm going to get you to uh, go to uh, some of the same Scripture that we uh, read last week. I'm going to uh, finish up with uh, the message that I started last week, Come As You Are. And so we're going to go to Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. From there we're going to go, we're going to add a few more scriptures to this. Um, We're going to go to Matthew chapter 22, verses 8 through 10. And from there we're going to go to Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17. Amen. So starting off in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Give them time to get to that. Oh, look at that. There they are. Amen. It says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. If you will turn over to Matthew chapter 22, and uh, we're going to read verses 8 through 10. Oh, no wonder it doesn't look right. I'm looking in chapter 21. I'm thinking, that's not the right scripture. Verses 8 through 10 in chapter 22 says, Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those who invited were not worthy. In other words, those that he had said to come uh, ended up not being worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found both, what does it say? Both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. And if you will turn over one more time, Revelation, the last chapter, verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, And let the one who is thirsty Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, I just love you so very much. God, this song has expressed what I feel in my heart. God, I need to be more aware of what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're moving in my life and my soul. Lord, I need to be aware that that when you want to do a work in me or you want to to teach me something from life that is going on around me, that I will be aware of the, the lessons that you need to teach me. God, I need to be aware of those times, Lord, you just want to fill me, that you need to comfort me and strengthen me. God, I need to be aware of the times that you want to come in and, and forgive and cleanse and make whole again. I need to be aware of those. So, the Lord, help us not only to be aware of your presence, Jesus, but to freely enter in, to come into your presence as you have asked us in your word in these scriptures that we've read. Lord, I pray for each one that is here, each one that is watching. Lord, that you will just, God, just speak into their hearts today. God, express this invitation in, in terms that, that they will be able to respond and say yes to you and come, Lord, to that place where you can do the work that is needed. I pray these things in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. We uh, are not going to go too much into what I preached last Sunday, but I'm just going to kind of compress a little bit of it very quickly. Uh, Talked about the Old Testament and how the priests had to go through quite the process in order to enter into the presence of God. Also talked about what the words mean that we studied or we looked at in Matthew today where Jesus said, Come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. And the word labor is to 
feel fatigued, to grow weary, or to be exhausted, and heavy laden is to be overburdened, to load up, sometimes with spiritual anxiety or religious rituals. And uh, so I'm just going to leave that there for a little bit, other than to mention that I think that that in serving God, it's it's... It's not God who puts all these burdens on us. It's not God who, who overloads us with stuff so that we get so fatigued and so worn out that we can't seem to do what's right spiritually. We place things upon ourselves. We take sometimes uh, things upon ourselves that, uh, that cause us stress, that cause us sometimes ulcers, headaches, you know, all the things that go along with having stress in our lives, high blood pressure. How many of you have had high blood pressure from time to time? And uh, and there are quite a few of you, as a matter of fact, but uh, I'm surprised there's some who don't have high blood pressure. Some of you are almost dead. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we looked at the word rest, and the word rest is used uh, in Scripture, and we're going to look at it a little more closely today as to mean to refresh or to have recreation or to strengthen. And, and I know that, that, that God wants us to be strong in Him. I know that He desires that, uh, well, I, I should mention this, that He's already provided for us the victory in our lives over the things that would come against us. And but oftentimes, can I just be real? Sometimes we just we just get caught up in defeat. We get we just get caught up in that whole defeatist attitude that says I can't do this or I can't accomplish this or I can't be better than what I am right now. And we think that within ourselves. And as a man thinketh in his heart, is what Scripture says, right? So if I think something long enough, it's going to start getting incorporated into my very being. And uh, you, we wonder sometimes when we look at the news how perverse our, our nations have gotten in the things that they've done. That did not just begin accidentally. It did not happen accidentally that at the time of the flood that people's thoughts and imaginations were only wicked continually. Because what is in people's minds is eventually, if you dwell on it long enough, it will consume you. And I'm not even talking sin. Now we could talk sin. We could talk lust. And we could talk about greed. And we could talk about power. And we can talk about all of those things. If you think long enough about something, you're going to want it bad enough that it's going to become a part of your life. But, but just things that, that distract us from being able to come into the presence of God, to feel that presence and have God renew us and have God strengthen us and have God do the work that is in us. So somewhere along the line, we have got to change the way that we do things. Now I have to be honest with you, I'm just too human sometimes to be able to change those things in me. There's times I work at it and I try and, and it seems like I do everything that I can to try and make myself a little bit better. I even try and force myself at times to read the Word of God and that's a good thing. I'm not saying that's not a good t- thing. There's times I have to force myself to try and pray or, or to want to fast or, or any of the things that we know that helps us to, to be able to get a grasp on things that are spiritual in our lives. But my humanity gets in the way. So that when I'm praying, I find my mind wandering over to other things. When I'm fasting, I just feel hungry. Rather than feeling God, I'm just hungry. (laughs) Give me a cookie, stale or otherwise, you know, anything at all. Just just give me something to eat because that's all I can think about. So instead of thinking about and dwelling on and feeling that presence of God and coming into that rest that God has for me, I end up just being miserable for the day. Or the two days, or the three days, or whatever it happens to be. So, we've got to find a way. As children of God, I want, I want to be able to feel God well enough, be aware of His presence so clearly that, that as God moves, whether I'm here, whether I'm uh, doing things around town, whatever it is that I'm doing, if I'm counseling, whatever it may be, that I'm so aware of God's presence that I could just take one instance and just step right in and He would be there. I want you to get to that place as well. 
I do believe that that God wants us, and I see by this invitation that was extended by Jesus to come unto me, all you that labor and are heavily, heavy, heavily laden, and I will give you rest, that his invitation is not to just a few of us. It's not just to those that we may put on a spiritual plane that's up a little higher. He says, I want all of you that are weary. All of you that are in this place where you're tired or fatigued. I want all of you that have placed these loads upon your, upon your life so that you always feel a little overburdened by what's going on around you. I want all of you to come to me. Every one of you. Now, we make reasons within ourselves why it is that we shouldn't come or don't feel like we should. Sometimes, and I just want to go through just a brief list of reasons why sometimes we, we don't come when God is asking us to step in. Sometimes there's sin in our lives. We've done things that, that have embarrassed us or caused us to be ashamed of who we are or how we're living and, and possibly even our thoughts and that and our thought life may, may have gone off the track somewhere and we've indulged ourselves in thoughts that are ungodly. And so we don't feel worthy and so rather than step into his presence when he's inviting us to come, we will hold back. And and I want you to know I've done this. I've been in services where the pastor preached a message and, and I felt his presence and I felt God convicting me and I sat where I was because I was a little ashamed of what I'd done and I didn't think that I was worthy of being able to step into his presence. The woman in adultery, although it seems like she had no choice, the woman that was caught in adultery and and brought to Jesus, how ashamed she must have been of her life standing there before him in front of all those people as they were wanting to condemn her and stone her. And yet she received something in that moment that, that she would never have received if she had not been in his presence because he forgave her in that moment. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I want you to know no matter what you've thought no matter what you've done no matter the things that your life has incorporated no it doesn't matter to him he just is inviting you to come because he's the only one that can deal with the ugliness that consumes us sometimes as humans in this lifetime. And uh, he has made provision for that, that we would be washed and that we would be able to be clean. Amen. Sometimes we just become frustrated with life. And we become frustrated with those around us. There has been, and if I can just be honest as a pastor, there's times I've been frustrated in ministering. Sometimes I felt like like preaching a message is wasted because I'm not sure anybody receives what God gave me to preach. I feel that way sometimes. Sometimes I feel frustrated with, with uh, financial things or, or different things that I have to deal with. And, and, but I have to tell you most of the time, and I, all of you are wonderful. <laughs> Mostly. Mostly it's people. Mostly it's those that, that I have to deal with and those that I have to uh, interact with. And, and uh, I found myself in that position this last week with somebody that's not in this church but is just somebody that I had to be involved with in work. And uh, I, I want you to know that I get there just like you do. And there's times I'm just as frustrated with, with situations and circumstances that go on around me. And you know what? I'm just that proud that sometimes I feel like I can handle it myself. Well, it was a good message this morning that Teresa taught, wasn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Spoke to me because uh, we've got to take that sense of self, the sense of self, and we've got to put it and have a sense of Him. Because too many times that sense of self overwhelms the sense of Him. 
And we ended up living in that self instead of living in Him. Well, I'll tell you, we've got to change the way that we are. If you're frustrated with, with things that are going around you, I want you to know you're frustrated not because of Him. You're frustrated because you're still trying to deal with the situations and circumstances in self rather than take them and step into His presence where He wants you to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't because we've been offended. Let me tell you something. If all of us didn't enter into the presence of God because we've been offended, we would never go. Because there's always a reason for offense. Doubtless, it says, the offenses will come. That's scripture. Jesus said that. Doubtless offenses will come. You, there are going to be offenses that will arise in your life. And I'll tell you something. If none are obvious, give your mind a few minutes to think about it. You're going to find some. Amen. And sometimes we, we don't... Let me be clear and plain. Sometimes... We don't want to forgive those that have offended us because we enjoy that feeling of being upset and possibly vengeance. And, and I'll tell you, I went to a church one time and was preaching and they were divided and, and I preached a great message <laughs> on loving your brothers and sisters and they all were praying and they were kneeling in the sanctuary and I went over to pray with one person and they were praying, God, deal with them such as they justly deserve. <laughs> they missed the context of the message. They wanted to stay in their offense rather than step into the presence of God where there was forgiveness and there was cleansing and they could go and they could hug their brother or sister and know that it wasn't pretended. Sometimes we don't want to come in where that rest is waiting for us if hatred or anger has grabbed our hearts and won't let go. I uh, I don't get angry very often. It's true. I, it's just not... Now, now, some of you are different. How many of you have a temper? I won't look at my wife right now. I'm going to look the other way. <laughs> but I don't have one that often. Like, I'm, my wife, for, the, for a lot of years, now probably in the last few years, she's probably been going on to two hands, said that she could count the times that I had lost it on one hand over the times that we've been married. But there's times that I have hated. There's times that, that people have done things and, and my wife would be the first to tell you that she would ask me, how are you doing with this? And I'd say, it's all fine. But just ask me. Start talking about this situation for just a little while and watch the emotion that floods to the surface with the situations and I've held on to things and took me and I even knew what the Bible says and I knew that I needed to pray for them and I knew that I needed to forgive them 70 times 7 times you know and uh, God increase our faith <laughs> uh, now I know why the disciples said that after Jesus told them they needed to forgive that many times God I've got <laughs> I don't have faith for that right now you better help me with all of this but sometimes we just want to hold on to the hey let me tell you something the only person that we are damaging in our lives when we hold on to hatred or anger over something that's going on in our life let me tell you they probably don't even know that we are holding on to that within ourselves. And the one we're damaging the most is the one that is hating or the one that is holding on to anger. And Jesus is saying, come. Just the way you are. You don't have to solve this before you come. You don't have to resolve any of these situations. Just come. Because when you come in, I can help you. And I will give you that place where it is possible for forgiveness and it is possible to receive joy. When worry and anxiety consume us over money or relationships, uh, 
uh, some people live in anxiety. They worry all the time. They live in fear of, of things that are coming, of things that are happening. They live in fear of, of uh, who knows, just everything and anything that comes their way. And they live that way in anxiety over, oh, well, what's going to happen if we do that? Or well, what's going to happen if we do that? And they live in that spot. And if you've got that, you need to step into His presence. When you're worn out and weary, and even though the Bible says, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, can I tell you with all the loads we sometimes take upon ourselves, we get weary in doing well and in doing the right thing. Come unto me. All of you that are laden, all of you that have all these burdens on you, and I will give you rest, Jesus said. Hebrews chapter, oops, I didn't even mark this one. Hebrews chapter 4, maybe they can get this up for me. Chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. Josh, if you're really, really quick. Oh, pfft. There we are. There were there. It's my first time with this new tongue. Uh, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Just hold there for a minute before you go to verse eleven. This is not, now we mentioned this in last Sunday's message. This is God's not calling to a, us to a life of inactivity because the next part of that verse where Jesus is saying come, he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's inviting us not to stop working for him, not to stop living for him, not to stop worshiping, not to stop reaching for souls. He, that's all a part of what he wants us to do when we're yoked together. What he's inviting us to do is work together with him rather than try and do it ourselves because when you're yoked together those two have to be in step together if one's pulling one way and one the other way you're not going to get much sowing done you're not going to get much plowing done because there's going to be too much contrariness and they're going to be fighting against each other but boy when we get in step with Jesus Christ amen so what this is saying is that you're going to stop from all of this working for yourself and by yourself without me working with you that's what you're going to see from verse 11 let us labor, therefore. Now, doesn't this sound, this sounds just so contradictory, doesn't it? Let's stand together. Musicians, you can come. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So it's, it's just talking about the children of Israel in the chapter previous. We don't want to take that out of context. Could not enter into the promised land because they didn't believe that they could take it. So the same example is being given now to God's people in this day and age in this dispensation. But it's saying we have to labor to enter in. So what do I have to do to enter into that place? Where God can do it, the work. What did you just say? Why is it so hard for us to surrender? Well, for one thing, we got all of this self stuff in the way. All of this, I got to take care of this myself. I've got to deal with this myself. And, and all of that just gets in the way of being able to step into His presence. So, laboring to enter into that rest because becomes something you know if we weren't so human it would probably be easy something we have to work to do we have to labor to do so right now think about what thoughts are interfering with you stepping into that rest that he has for you. What frustrations in your life? What angers? What hatred? What sin? What weariness? What, what right now is in the way from entering into the rest that Jesus has for you? Close your eyes for a minute. 
we felt God's presence in this place. It's not just in this place, just to help us have a nice feeling and then go home. God wants to be able to deal with all the reasons and all the things that we hold on to. So just right now, with your eyes closed, I want you to think about, Lord, how can I release this from my life? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I just want to surrender. Just the way I am right now. With all the things in my life. All my worries about my children, my grandchildren. All of those things. All the times, Lord, that I'm so frustrated with things around me. Jesus, I just want to come into your presence right now. You're the only one that can heal all of this. So this altar is open. If you want to come, bring all, all of it. Don't worry about trying to get rid of it ahead of time. Bring all the things, the thoughts, the sin. Bring your anger, your frustration. Bring all your doubts, all your questions, all your fears. Bring all your wounds, your scars, your bruises. And just come. Just come. This altar is open if you want to come and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.